And the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 13467 in the name of Neil Bibby on fair trade is the goal for Glenifer High School and Bala Sport. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would further invite those members who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly, please. And I now call on Neil Bibby to open the debate. Mr Bibby, you have seven minutes. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to bring forward today's motion for debate. I would like to thank uh, all members who have supported the motion. Fair trade in football is a very important issue. Why? Because around 40,000 people work in the ball-making industry in the town of Sialkot in northern Pakistan, producing tens of millions of footballs every year for multinational companies. A staggering 70% of the world's sports balls are made there. But currently, less than 1% of the sports balls we play with around the world are made under fair trade conditions. The Fair Trade Football Campaign aims to improve the pay and working conditions for these men and women. Through fair trade certification, workers both in the factories and stitching centres benefit from decent conditions and the fair trade premium, which is an extra cash payment of 10%, which workers democratically decide on what social and economic developmental projects to invest in. This is typically health care and education for families and schemes like the Fair Price Shop, so workers can obtain essential items at a fair cost. Following a visit to Sialkot last year, Angus Kuhl, of the, a co-founder of Bala Sport, which officially launched in February this year to, to expand awareness and the availability of fair trade sports balls, talked about the vast differences he had found between the factories. He said, we visited four factories producing balls under fair trade agreements. You could see that they had fire escapes, fire extinguishers, health and safety notices, proper ventilation and everything you'd expect to find in a UK factory. The workers had face masks and eye protection. But we went to the, another factory, there was nothing like that. It was underground in the basement of a building and the only ventilation was from holes in the ceiling. So the differences between fair trade factories and others couldn't be clearer. Buying fair trade footballs really does make a difference to people's lives. And by purchasing fair trade balls, we can demonstrate our commitment to fairness and to solidarity with others. President officer, that's why today I'm sure members across the chamber will join me in congratulating the pupils and staff at Glenifer High School in Paisley on their work with Bala Sport to become the, their first member school in the UK. Bala Sport has been a key driver of the Fair Trade Football Campaign and by buying shares in the social enterprise, Glenifer High School will now have a say in how Bala Sport is run. This is crucial because Bala Sport is a member organisation. The idea behind the share issue is to raise more cash for further investment. This enables them to order and sell more balls so that more and more producers benefit in Pakistan. These will not be high value shares but they are crucial to the development of the organisation. Glenifer High School's commitment to Bala Sport and to using fair trade footballs is not just a credit to the pupil and staff and to head teacher David Nichols, but to the entire community. And it would be remiss of me not to give special mention to PE teacher Dominic Tolan, who has been instrumental in making fair trade footballs a priority for the school. I was delighted to visit Glenifer High School earlier this year and to donate some fair trade footballs uh, to the school team. I'm very pleased to hear that they've attracted positive comments from pupils with regards to their quality, and I know the school will be selling fair trade footballs during next year's fair trade fortnight. Plans are also being made to organise a football tournament within the school using the balls from Bala Sport. I know that uh, Dominic has been contacted by another fair trade organisation called Cool Schools, which is based in England, to discuss developing additional fair trade initiatives at the school. Glenifer High School has led the way when it comes to fair, the Fair Trade Football Campaign and it is clear that it has kicked off a wider interest in the Fair Trade Movement, which is very welcome. We should be doing everything we can to encourage other schools now to follow Glenifer's ex examples. There are other organisations that I want to recognise in this debate. The Five and Five Complex in Paisley has consistently supported the campaign and grew up 
uh, given up uh, their pitches free of charge for fair trade uh, football tournaments that I have organised in Paisley. And the support of uh, businesses and organisations is crucial to promoting the campaign and the support of supporters direct. Uh, should be mentioned as well. Presiding officer, as I said, Barra Sport is key to the Fair Trade fo uh, Football Campaign, and I know they are currently working with the Fair Trade Foundation schools team on a video about the ball production process and their workers in Pakistan, as well as other resources to use in schools. Barra Sport staff will also be visiting the factories again in late October and gathering case study information. In July, Stirling Albion and Hearts played with the Barra Sport. Uh, pro Ball in a Supporters Direct Scotland Cup friendly. And Barra Sports recently became the official match ball sponsor of United Glasgow FC, the refugee team. And they are sponsoring the Spot the Ball competition in the big issue to continue the process of raising awareness. The campaign is continuing apace, and the key question for us today is what we can do to support the campaign and encourage more schools and clubs to get involved. Because there are millions of footballs bought and sold in the UK every year. Football is the people's game. Although its reputation has been tarnished by recent FIFA scandals, it is still a universal language that spans the globe. It is powerful, and we can harness that power to change the world around us. We see football used to raise awareness of all sorts of issues and to help tackle a variety of challenges. Our hope must be that football can have a real impact on raising awareness of the fair trade movement, particularly amongst young people and those who perhaps do not normally buy fair trade products. I have welcomed the opportunity to meet with uh, the Minister Hamza Youssef to discuss uh, what more we can do. Uh, I know um, he and uh, Jamie Hepburn have a keen interest in this issue and perhaps um, they would give further consideration this afternoon to the possibility of the Scottish Government supporting a national fair trade football tournament to raise the profile of the campaign even further. We have had a, a number of local uh, tournaments and I hope that we can, working together, um, we can uh, have a national tournament to potentially raise even more awareness to new heights and, um, and ensure that more fair trade balls are being bought. Of course, we shouldn't forget that fair trade sports balls aren't exclusive to football. Bala Sports will have rugby balls on sale shortly after this year's Rugby World Cup, and we should consider how we extend the campaign to other sports. Presiding officer, our challenge is to support and expand on the excellent work being done by organisations like Bala Sport. And lastly, I want to mention the role of our professional football clubs and authorities. People have said it is futile to lobby clubs who are tied into long-term contracts and sponsorships. But I say, given the amount of money that some of our professional clubs have, the least they can do is purchase ethically produced balls. I am going to write to all professional clubs and the football authorities in the near future, urging them to follow the example of schools like Glenifer High. And I hope the Scottish Government will consider joining that call. I am sure it won't be easy, but hopefully in time, fair trade footballs will be the norm and not the exception. Fair trade footballs can be a game changer for thousands of people, and we must do everything we can to make that happen. Many thanks. And I now call on Linda Fabiani to be followed by Patricia Ferguson. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It's a, it's a long time since I, since I spoke about fair trade in this chamber. I used to do that quite a lot because my hometown is Straven many, many, many years ago, uh, along with Aberfeldy, um, jointly became Scotland's first fair trade towns. And it was something we were very, very proud of at the time. And certainly in Straven that carries on, although I no longer represent Straven, so I don't get to, to go along to all the events that they have. And it's something that, that this Parliament has always been very interested in, is fair trade and its progression. And that's why I welcome Neil Bibby's motion so much. Um, a lot of it through schools, and uh, I'm going to the Malawi cross-party group after this, and it's to specifically talk about the links that our own schools have with schools in Malawi, and I know that a lot of that uh, centres around fair trade. Fair trade is very often just discussed in terms of um, products like coffee, sugar, tea, uh, things like that. And also about agriculture, very often when we hear about producers getting a good deal, it's about agriculture. And certainly um, the other thing that's happened there is, as time has moved on, we've recognised that um, fair trade practices in agriculture um, in less fortunate countries than ours can help towards climate justice as well, because the fair trade 
continuously promotes sustainable agricultural practices in the production of fair trade products. And that brings me on to some of what um, I really welcome about Neil Bibby's motion here, is that we are now talking in a motion in this Parliament about a different kind of fair trade. It's about fair trade in relation to factories and that kind of intensive production. And I think that is so very, very important because, as Neil said, it's, it's also about workers' rights and it is also about health and safety. And we've seen terrible things happen in um, the production of the clothes factory, etc. So it's good that we're talking openly about these things. Trade union rights, I mean, some of the things that are still going on in um, you know, parts of Latin America, for example, in the fruit fields are still very much against union rights. We should always be aware of it. That's all part of fair trade. Procurement generally is something that's really, really important. And I would like to see, um, I've spoken about this before, and at this point I would like to mention John McCallion, former MSP here, who when he left here, I think it was Oxfam he was working for, and was really pushing for fair trade and procurement. And I am still of the opinion, actually, I have to say, that we can't really call ourselves Scotland the fair trade nation unless we're insisting on fair trade in more than uh, consumables. I would like to see fair trade cotton, for example, used throughout the health service. I would like to see um, eventually all our public services insisting on fair trade in their procurement. Fair trade can apply at home as well, of course. It doesn't have to be overseas. We should always be looking to procure fairly, particularly um, in our public services. I'll go back to football. <laughs> um, because, and I, want, I should um, congratulate Glenifer High School. I think it's a wonderful initiative that they're doing. But I had a look at the Scottish Government's doing in, in football, because it's not something I generally know much about. And uh, one of the Commonwealth Games legacies was giving um, funding to a project in Malawi for joint football coaching programme with the SFA and the Football Association of Malawi. And it's about sustainable infrastructure over there, equipment and sharing knowledge and skills. I would like to think that the equipment is fair trade. I would like to think that the footballs that are being used are fair trade and that the strips are fair trade. And for me, that fair trade would be about production in Malawi, not about gathering up shed loads of stuff and sending it over from here, which brings me back to that circle that says all these things are so important. Fair trade, localism, sustainability, and indeed climate justice. And it's only when we start to really look at it in the round that we can say we're really making progress. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I now call on Patricia Ferguson to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by congratulating my colleague Neil Bibby on securing this evening's debate? And can I also congratulate Glenifer High School on its excellent de decision to invest in and promote Bala Sport? And I'll say a little bit more about Glenifer High later in my contribution to the debate. Bala Sport is based in Glasgow. It is a cooperative launched in February this year with a start-up grant of £190,000 from the Co Cooperative Glasgow Development Fund, a fund established as part of the City Council's drive to become a cooperative council. And the aim of Bala Sport is to promote the use of fair trade certified sports balls. Now, Bala balls are made by skilled people to the same specification as balls accredited by FIFA, and they undergo the same rigorous testing. The only difference between a Bala ball and a FIFA ball is the logo. And I'm with Bala when they say, we don't want to pay the fees imposed by FIFA for use of their logo. We'd rather pay the makers of our balls more. Every FIFA certified ball that is purchased has involved a manufacturer or distributor paying a test fee to FIFA. And on top of that, a royalty fee for every single ball sold. Those fees will obviously be reflected in the purchase price too. Buying a Bala ball ensures that the workers in Silicon in Pakistan who make the balls are paid fairly, 
have good working conditions, and then have taken, as Neil Bibby rightly said, the democratic decision about how to invest their share of the profits. And what they've done so far is to invest in free eye tests and treatment for eye disease and defects, <coughs> free school backpacks and scholarships for workers' children, and a water purification plant that the entire community can use. Surely a better use of money than payments to FIFA. And it did occur to me when I was thinking about this this afternoon that if FIFA were to adopt fair trade footballs, it might actually help its rather tattered and tarnished reputation somewhat. But I was delighted to hear, therefore, that not only are Glenifer High School using Bala balls in their sports, but that they have also become shareholders in Bala. That seems to me to be an excellent decision by the students and their teachers and is an example of their support for fair trade and their experience of ethical investment is one that I'm sure that they will take with them into their lives beyond school. They deserve our congratulations, as do the students at Greenwood School who have also invested. Presiding officer, I'm very proud that Scotland is a fair trade nation, but achieving that accolade should only be the beginning of our campaign to make trade fair. And I agree entirely with Linda Fabiani in her comments around that issue. And the promotion of ballables should be part of that campaign. My colleague Neil Bibby has promoted the idea of a national football tournament utilising fair trade balls. That's an excellent idea, I think, and could help not just to promote fair trade and fairly traded footballs, but also to boost participation in football by girls and by boys. Presiding officer, nowadays, one in three bananas sold in the UK supermarkets bear the fair trade mark. But the number of fair trade certified sports balls sold in the UK is less than a quarter of 1%. Bala aims to increase that number significantly. Glenifer High St School are supporting them, and we should do so too. Many, many thanks. I now call on Liz Smith to be followed by Hanzala Malik. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. In today's uh, times, there is uh, what I think many people will see as an interesting but nonetheless controversial article by Magnus Linklater. Uh, it decries the negativity which all too often surrounds Scottish football and which he perceives contrasts it these days with other sports in Scotland. He would, however, I'm sure, be the first to recognise that what has happened at Glenifer is something to celebrate, not just because of the benefits uh, to the local community, but because of the benefits that clearly uh, have a much wider implication uh, for workers elsewhere. And can I uh, congratulate uh, Neil Bibby for what I thought was uh, a very uh, moving and also very informative uh, speech from bringing this motion uh, to Parliament, uh, and also obviously uh, to Glenifer uh, High School and to Bala Sport. It's a tremendous accomplishment uh, to be the first school uh, to do this, and I note that Patricia Ferguson says that Greenwood uh, School is now uh, on the same basis. So I hope it will not be long before other schools across Scotland are inspired to do exactly uh, that. Because I think acts like these uh, are uh, so good for local communities, the spirit of local communities, and clearly for all those who are in the process of making the balls. And I have to say, I didn't realise the statistics uh, until they were explained just a little while ago, and that they are impressive. I think a special mention must go to Dominic Tollan. I understand he was very influential uh, in terms of Glenifer High School's membership and investment in Bala Sport, and it's only right that uh, individuals such as Mr Tollan uh, receive our congratulations. I think it's uh, very important to understand the background to Bala Sport. Uh, Patricia Ferguson gave us uh, some uh, very interesting information about how it came together as a cooperative, and uh, by seeking to help workers in Pakistan by ensuring that those who make 70% of the world's footballs receive a fair wage for their work and for fair working conditions. And I think uh, Linda Fabiani makes an excellent point about trying to spread uh, the benefits of fair trade, because I think you're quite right to say that um, the impression in many minds of public is that it's uh, about food, and it's not all about food by any stretch, in fact, far from it. And I think the benefits that have been described this afternoon just show uh, how much it can be uh, diverse. And I think the value of sport in that context is so often uh, forgotten. And that's where I 
uh, would agree, actually, uh, with Magnus Linklater in one aspect of his article today, where he did um, home in on the negativity uh, that can surround it. And I think that's a great pity sometimes that uh, we hear only about that because so many of our young people across Scotland are doing fantastic things. Um, and it's good that as MSPs we can highlight uh, some of these because they are very special and they bind together not only the school uh, but uh, obviously people in far gone countries. And I think that's a, a very uh, important part of that. I think there is a, 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 a very important need to promote the collaboration between consumers and producers, NGOs and governments to further fair trade in Scotland and also uh, worldwide. And I think it's becoming increasingly evident about the benefits uh, that that can bring. And that's something uh, that must encourage uh, all of us as we work together to secure uh, market access to low-income countries, but to tackle a lot of the social uh, and cultural uh, issues that they have, particularly when it comes to the border uh, obstacles that they often face when it comes to training. So I think a strong united voice from uh, this parliament is important. Uh, and I also think that it's important that we uh, can support and promote uh, the open rules-based, non-discriminatory and equitable multilateral trading system. So can once again, I uh, congratulate Neil Bibby on that, uh, the schools and also uh, Bala for all the excellent work that they have done. I'm sure they have a very bright future and we certainly support uh, the uh, idea of an international tournament uh, across Scotland to demonstrate that we take this issue very seriously. Many thanks. Now Colin Hanzala Malik, after which we move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you very much and good evening, Presiding Officer. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Neil Bibby for securing today's debate and also Glen Affair School and uh, Greenwood School as well for their participation in this whole scheme. I have visited Sialcourt uh, myself uh, and I've seen firsthand the footballs being made and I can assure this house that the skill that is needed to produce these items is very high and exceptional skill indeed. Uh, presiding officer, I am sure that many Partick Thistle fans will also be happy to learn that the football club in Glasgow actually sells the footballs made in Pakistan with the Partick Thistle official logo on them. That made my grandson very proud as a Partick Thistle supporter. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, may I say that uh, Pakistan uh, has been uh, well known and well renowned throughout the world for its uh, sporting, uh, manufacturing of sporting equipment, in including footballs, hockey and cricket. Um, and Pakistan, in fact, is one of the largest manufacturers of pipe, bag, pipe, ba pipe bags uh, in the world today. So uh, you, will, you will not be surprised to see that there, there are many skills in Pakistan. But however, Neil Baby makes such an important point uh, that you know, a fair day's work deserves a fair day's pay. Uh, and I think that the, the Bala scheme is going to be uh, a very good, f not only for the workers, but also I'm sure the Pakistan government will appreciate it because end of the day, uh, they're competing in the world um, theater. And I think it's important to see that the pro products that they produce are not only just valued, but the workers are actually paid a fair pay. Um, because uh, footballs in particular that, that, that are produced in Salcourt, I've seen logos like Coca-Cola uh, and some other, some very large companies using those footballs, um, including the World Football Tournaments uh, and many other tournaments around uh, the Middle East and so on. So it's a, it's a very popular and a very um, demanding item from that part of the world. And I'm sure uh, this is why I'm very, very keen and in fact, very thankful to people who want to actually make sure these people are paid, paid a fair wage for the work that they do. I also take this opportunity to thank everybody involved in fair trade. I think um, when I first became um, aware of fair trade around the world was when I first became a counselor um, and I was invited to one of the churches in my own ward and I for the first time saw various uh, things manufactured and made around the world from jam, tea, coffee and chocolates. <laughs> chocolate being a, a weakness of my own. Uh, and I have to say that when I, when I actually understood the concept, um, I was really very proud that we in Scotland care enough for people around the world to do something like this. 
so when um, I heard about the, uh, I heard of the debate and about uh, Sialkot and the footballs, um, I was really impressed. I felt yes, this is something that I want to take part in, and I want to discuss this, and I want to also send a, a message to the government of Pakistan is to support us, help them do this, because I think their help will be very important for us as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we now move to closing speech from the Minister. Thank you very much, President Robson. Let me begin by saying to him, Zala Malik, his grandson should always be very proud to be a Partick Thistle supporter, but that could just be my own uh, perspective, probably shared with Patricia Ferguson, uh, no doubt. Can I say... Uh, I'm very delighted to have uh, the opportunity to close uh, this debate on behalf of uh, the government. Can I begin by uh, thanking uh, Neil Bibby for bringing forward uh, this motion and other members for their contribution. Can I join uh, Neil Bibby and uh, other uh, colleagues in uh, congratulating the staff and especially uh, the pupils at Glenifer High School for uh, their hard work in uh, promoting fair trade generally, but also their uh, interesting uh, initiative with uh, BALA uh, and uh, it was very uh, heartening to hear that uh, Greenwood uh, Secondary School are uh, following uh, suit. Uh, we are primarily uh, tonight focused on uh, Glenifer High School's uh, work with Bala Sports, but uh, of course that does uh, build on uh, the existing initiatives they have uh, at uh, the uh, school, and I think it should be placed on record. I'm sure Mr Bibby would want that as well, that they have a, a long-standing uh, interest in this area, and they should be uh, congratulated uh, for that. And I know that uh, that has uh, led to the school being heavily involved in fundraising for Malawi. And, uh, I mentioned that uh, to uh, turn to the point that was made by Linda Fabiani uh, about the uh, Scottish Government, the SFA's partnership uh, with Malawi for football coaching, which is an excellent uh, initiative. Uh, can I uh, say to uh, Linda Fabiani, I will undertake to look into her uh, point. I think it's an entirely reasonable one about the utilisation of fair trade equipment as part of that project, and I will undertake to get back to her uh, on uh, that particular uh, point. Uh, since uh, 2007, the Scottish Government has awarded more than £1.2 million uh, core funding to the Scottish Fair Trade Forum in order to take forward our ambition for Scotland to become a fair trade nation, something which I think we were all collectively in this Parliament delighted to see Scotland achieving in 2013. Although our uh, funding has hopefully been felt to be important, fair trade uh, nation status would not have been possible without uh, people in cities, towns and villages, universities, schools and colleges up and down the length and the breadth of the country committed to supporting fair trade. They are the individuals making uh, the difference often in their own small individual way to making a big uh, and positive change uh, around uh, the world. And of course, we now know that we have 100 per cent of uh, local authority areas having active uh, groups working uh, towards uh, fair trade status, 56 per cent of local authority areas have achieved fair trade status. All cities have fair trade city status. 88 of Scotland's 156 towns in Scotland either have uh, that status or have active groups working towards this. And Linda Fabiani uh, reminded us that Straven and Aberfeldy uh, led the way in that regard. And we see more and more uh, people across the country uh, buying fair trade products on a regular uh, basis. Uh, schools like Glenifer High, whose teachers and pupils are leading the way by investing in Bala Sports and so having uh, a direct impact in the lives of uh, football stitchers in uh, Pakistan, are uh, the epitome of uh, this uh, effort across the country. Of course, it's not just uh, footballs. Over the last uh, six years, the availability and range of fair trade products has continued to rise, with more than 4,500 pro fair trade products readily available, meaning consumers can buy everything from uh, fair trade gold and clothes to wine and flowers. The list it continues to grow. As the number of uh, fair trade products has risen, so has awareness of the fair trade market. The last uh, poll the Fair Trade Forum undertook, 81% of the population recognised uh, the fair trade market, with 63% uh, of people regularly uh, buy, buying fair trade products, which is uh, positive. It does show there is still growth potential there and there is more work still to be done. It is very easy to assume that someone else is taking care of business, that you don't have to think about where the produce you buy is coming from or how the choices you make affects the choices someone else will have to make. Uh, like having to choose which of your children gets an education, decides who needs medicine the most or who will eat that day. We all know that this is the miserable and grinding reality faced by millions of people around the world each and every day. And it's that knowledge that should spur us on to spread the message that making small changes to the way 
we show up makes a massive difference to the lives of others. We all have a responsibility to do what we can and we can all buy uh, fair trade, not just because it ensures that small-scale farmers and other producers are paid a fair price and can provide for their families, but because of the impact it has on them as people leading a dignified life, making uh, decisions and controlling uh, their futures is something uh, that we all uh, have a right to expect, whatever our circumstances, wherever in the world we happen uh, to be born. Of course, fair trade is just a, a small part of the work that we as a government are involved in to help promote fairness and equality, not just here in Scotland, but around the world as well. Our international development and climate justice funds are making a real difference to the lives of vulnerable people in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. And our commitment to uh, tackling climate change and promoting renewable energy shows that we are taking a responsibility for our actions and the impact we have on people around the world. As a fair trade nation, we are uh, leading the way in highlighting how support for fair trade means support for people in the developing world, just as Glenuffer High School are leading the way in highlighting how support for Bala Sports and fair trade sports balls means support for stitchers in Pakistan. I know that the school is uh, working closely with uh, Bala Sports Managing Director Angus Cool to promote the organisation and their community share issue, and I hope the publicity they uh, help to generate inspires other schools, as we have heard, is starting to do uh, sports groups and sporting organisations uh, to get involved. Liz Smith uh, spoke of the uh, power of sport to, to leverage social change. Neil Bibby spoke uh, in particular of the power of football through its universality to uh, make a difference. We have uh, heard some uh, action from football clubs, the uh, match that took place between uh, Stirling Albion and uh, uh, Hart of Midlothian that was mentioned by Neil Bibby, the uh, work that's been done by Patrick Thistle. Uh, mentioned uh, by Hens Alam We also know that the SFA does have a, a contract for the provision of fair trade footballs at community and grassroots uh, level. Um, uh, and of course, Neil Bibby also spoke of uh, the leadership role in, in other uh, sports. And uh, I was uh, delighted that uh, previously there has been uh, some work uh, undertaken uh, with uh, the Scottish Rugby Union to try and help uh, promote uh, fair trade uh, rugby balls. It as well. It, let me it, it, it briefly, yes, of course. I'm grateful to the Minister for taking an intervention so late in his speech, but when he mentioned leadership, it occurs to me that we've heard in the last 24 hours of the appointment of Louise Martin as the President of the Commonwealth Games Federation, uh, a very worthy woman and a very worthy Scot. And given her new role, I wonder whether we might want to make contact with her to urge that the Commonwealth Games Federation takes account of the availability of sports uh, equipment, sports balls particularly, that are fairly traded. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I welcome Minister. intervention because now I'll be in trouble from Elizabeth for not being the person who mentioned her appointment. Of course, congratulations to her on her appointment. And uh, indeed, I'm happy. I will be uh, uh, writing to her to congratulate her. And I'm obviously in regular contact with her. And I'm happy to, to raise that as uh, an issue with her. Uh, another issue that uh, Ms Ferguson and indeed Neil uh, Bibby raised was the uh, idea, the innovative suggestion of a, a national fair trade football. Uh, to open, let me say I'm very happy to consider any serious proposal uh, made, so if one is forthcoming, I will give it my utmost uh, consideration. Let me close, uh, President Officer, by uh, thanking uh, Neil Bibby again for his motion and all who have contributed to the debate for uh, continuing to highlight our shared commitment to ensuring that we can all, here in Scotland, play our part in helping make the world a fairer place. Thank you very much. Many thanks. Thank you all for taking part in this debate. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.